Did you know that millions of years ago we were just tiny, single-celled organisms? Kind of like a speck of dust? Yep, that's right. Our story begins in the vast, swirling seas of a young and fiery Earth. Here, the first forms of life, so simple they were only made up of a single cell, started their incredible journey. Picture a world filled with these microscopic creatures, floating around, going about their business. They were the true pioneers, the first to test the waters, quite literally, of life. Now you might be thinking, how did we go from being a speck of dust in the ocean, to the complex beings we are today? Well it's all thanks to a process called evolution. Over millions and millions of years these single-celled organisms began to change, to evolve. They became more complex, growing and dividing, developing into multicellular organisms. Just imagine, each new generation of life forms was slightly different from the one before. Some of these changes were small, like a new color or a slightly different shape, but others were big, like growing an extra limb or developing a new way to find food. These changes, or mutations as scientists call them, were passed down from parent to offspring, slowly shaping the course of life on Earth. This march of progress wasn't a straight line though. It was more like a winding path, full of twists and turns, dead ends and leaps forward. Some species flourished while others vanished without a trace. But through it all, life persisted, growing ever more diverse and complex. And so in the grand ballet of evolution, the stage was set for more advanced forms of life to emerge. From the depths of the ocean to the highest mountain peaks, life began to fill every corner of the earth. And just like that, from tiny specks, life as we know it began to take shape. Imagine changing so much over time you wouldn't even recognize yourself. That's what happened to life on Earth. Let's dive into the process of evolution, a fascinating journey of change and adaptation. Over millions of years, life on Earth has been constantly evolving. But what does that mean exactly? Well evolution is a bit like a never-ending game of survivor. It's all about how species change over time to adapt to their environment. Think of it like this. Imagine you're a tiny fish in a big pond. If you're a slow swimmer, you might end up as dinner for a hungry heron. But if you're a fast swimmer, not only do you escape the heron, but you also get to stick around and have lots of little fast swimming fish babies. Over time, the pond becomes full of fast swimmers. That's evolution in action. Now you might be wondering who's the host of this game show. Well, that's where natural selection comes in. Natural selection is nature's way of choosing who gets to pass on their traits to the next generation. It's kind of like a talent show where the best adapted to the environment get the golden buzzer. But what about this phrase we often hear, survival of the fittest? Well, it doesn't mean the strongest or the fastest always win. In the game of evolution, fit means being well adapted to your environment. So a tiny, slow-moving tortoise can be just as fit as a speedy cheetah, depending on where it lives and what challenges it faces. Remember, evolution isn't about becoming better. It's about becoming different in a way that helps a species survive and thrive. It's a slow process, taking place over millions of years with each tiny change adding up to create the rich tapestry of life we see today. So, always remember, change is not always a bad thing. Sometimes, it can lead to something amazing. Now let's talk about when we, as humans, entered the scene. It wasn't as grand as a movie premiere, but it was pretty significant. Our story begins with the hominids, the first human-like beings. They were a group of species that walked upright just like you and me, but they didn't strut down a red carpet or do a fancy dance. Instead, they were busy surviving and evolving in a world that was much different from what we know today. The hominids were not quite human, but they were getting there. They were a stepping stone along the path of evolution, a path that eventually led to us. These hominids were our ancestors, the folks who started it all. Now, if we want to meet these ancestors, we have to go way back in time, about 7 million years to be exact. That's when the oldest known hominid, Sahelanthropus chadensis, was living. His fossil remains were discovered in the African country of Chad. And guess what? He could walk upright, just like us. As we move forward in time, we find other hominids. There's Australopithecus afarensis, known from the famous Lucy skeleton who lived around 3.5 million years ago. And then there's Homo habilis, our direct ancestor who appeared about 2 million years ago. These hominids were becoming more and more like us. They were using tools, walking fully upright and even beginning to lose that ape-like fur. And then, finally, about 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens, that's us, appeared on the scene. 
We were smarter, more adaptable and more capable of changing the world around us than any species before us. So the next time you look in the mirror, remember, you are looking at the result of millions of years of evolution. You are a part of a long, fascinating story that started with the hominids and has led to us. And that's how we made our grand entry, from apes to humans, quite a journey, right? We might think we're very different from other animals, but guess what? We share a lot of similarities with them. Now you might be wondering, how can that be? Well, let's dive into the fascinating world of genetics. You see, every living creature on this planet, from the smallest ant to the largest elephant, and yes, including us humans, is made up of genes. These genes are like tiny instruction manuals that tell our bodies how to grow and function. And here's the really cool part. Many of these genes are shared across different species. That's right, we share a large chunk of our genes with other animals. In fact, we share about 98.7% of our genes with chimpanzees and bonobos. That's almost like saying, hey, you and I, we're pretty much the same. But why is that, you may ask? Well, it's because we have a common ancestor. Around 6 million years ago, there was a species that was neither human nor chimpanzee but was the starting point for both. Over time, that species evolved in different directions, leading to the diverse range of species we see today. Imagine it like a family tree. You and your siblings might look a bit different, have different personalities, but you share your parents, right? Now, extend that concept over millions of years and you've got the idea. It's not just chimpanzees and bonobos though. We share about 85% of our genes with mice, 50% with bananas, and even 15% with mustard plants. Talk about a wild family reunion. So, you see, we're all connected in this vast web of life. Every animal, every plant, every microbe, they're all part of our extended family. We're not so different after all. We're all part of the same story, the grand tale of life on Earth. So, the next time you see a chimpanzee, remember they're not just another animal, they're our distant cousins. Now, you might be thinking, if we're so closely related to other animals, what makes us different? Well, buckle up, because we're about to delve into all the things that make us humans stand out in the animal kingdom. For starters, we're the only species that has the ability to think abstractly. We can imagine, dream and think beyond the here and now. We can create art, music and poetry, bringing beauty and expression into the world in ways that no other species can. Another thing that sets us apart is our ability to use language, not just simple signals or calls but complex language filled with subtleties and nuances, enabling us to share our thoughts, feelings and ideas with others. And speaking of others, we humans are incredibly social creatures. We build societies, establish laws and work together in ways that no other animals do. So, while we might have a lot in common with other animals, we have our own special traits that make us uniquely human. Now that we've taken a whirlwind tour of human evolution, it's time to test what you've learned. So put on your thinking caps, folks, and let's dive right in. Question 1. Can you recall the name of the first human-like beings we talked about? Here's a hint, they had a fancy Latin name. Moving on to question 2. Remember when we talked about our animal relatives? Can you name one animal species that we humans are closely related to? I promise it's not as tricky as it sounds. And finally, question 3. What's one key characteristic that sets us apart from other animals? It could be anything from physical traits to our abilities. Alright, that's your brain workout for the day. Don't worry if you didn't get all of them right, the important thing is you're learning, and that's the end of our journey through human evolution. Remember, we all started from tiny specks and look at us now, exploring the mysteries of our past. Stay curious, stay adventurous and keep learning.